Welcome back. With a mission to educate thousands of New Yorkers, the nonprofit organization New York Public Interest Reach Group aims to amplify the voices of average New Yorkers in public policy debates. Using research and public education, NYPIRG examines campaigns, important issues, and more to engage New Yorkers in efforts towards pr protecting the environment, public health, and more. The project coordinator for NYPIRG, Kayla Rom Romanelli, joins me to discuss their work. Kayla, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Now, can you provide a brief overview of NYPIRG and its overall mission? Um, so NYPIRG is a student-directed nonprofit here in New York State. Um, our board of directors are elected from our college campuses. Um, at both CUNY, SUNY, and a few private schools. Um, and at NYPIRG, our student leaders, some volunteers, interns, and board members all work together um, with me and other uh, professional staff at NYPIRG to educate, engage, and activate fellow students on important issues um, like protecting our environment, fixing the MTA, um, hunger and homelessness outreach, protecting our democracy, um, protecting funding for higher education, and fighting for consumer justice. Now, how does the student-directed nature of NYPER contribute to the organization's effectiveness in engaging students in various projects and initiatives? It gives them a voice. Um, they, Our board of directors, like I said, is completely made up of students, so they direct where our organization is going to go, what issues we're going to work on, and then they can show their fellow students, along with our professional staff, how students can really get activated, educated, and engage in the political system. Now, one of the areas that you focus on is hunger and homelessness, and we think that's very important here in New York City, especially in the Bronx, and so many of our communities, you know, face that. How does NYPER contribute to addressing hunger and homelessness through outreach projects? Yeah, um, so my students at Bronx Community College, this is one of the issues that they're most interested in. Um, a really startling fact that I found out was 50% of students at Bronx Community College are either homeless, don't know where they're going to sleep tonight, um, or are living in a shelter. So the goal is to provide direct service through volunteerism, hosting events, food drives. Um, most recently, Bronx Community College students had what we call our trick or eat, um, where we went out into the community here in the Bronx and community members donated um, 800, uh, sorry, 844 individual food items to Bronx Community College, and those items went to the food pantry, which serves any CUNY student. They don't have to be a BCC student. You know, they can go to any single one of the community uh, CUNY schools. Um, and then we also volunteer at that food pantry and help students shop for themselves and their families. Um, and we have students who volunteer at the BCC Access Resource Center which helps students apply for food stamps, housing, and things of that nature. And I'm really happy to hear that, you know, that's some of the work that you're doing, because I know that with the holidays around the corner, people usually tend to do this type of work during, you know, Thanksgiving or around the holiday season, but to hear that you were doing it even for Halloween and prior, I think that's so amazing. And oh, that, yeah, you we know, do it all year round. <laughs> right, so I, I love to hear that. Now, when it comes to consumer justice, one of the services offered is a small claims court action center. Can you elaborate on how this initiative works and the role students play in these types of projects? Yeah, so our small claims court action center provides a completely free service uh, to any New Yorker that wants to call the 1-800 number um, and get procedural help with the small claims court process. Um, our students at Bronx Community College, um, we partner with the Paralegal Studies Department, and this isn't a get a coffee internship. Um, our students are getting hands-on experience that will help them develop their career path, um, working with the people that call our 1-800 number and giving them that procedural help. Um, it also gives students those immediate results, because a lot of advocacy work, you know, these projects take years but this in 20 to 30 minutes they can help someone and you know close that case and really make an impact on a person's life now the next step that i want to talk about is voting and i think yeah. that you know when we talk about students and younger generations sometimes voting uh it's, it's very highly debatable, and a lot of people have a lot of thoughts. Now, in terms of voting rights, how does NYPIRG ensure that political participation is accessible to all New Yorkers? Um, so every year in the fall semester, we run a statewide voter registration drive. This year, between the beginning of the semester and the end of August and the deadline for voter registration at the end of October, NYPIRG alone registered over 10,000 students to vote. 
Um, and then we also help the students that we register to vote know where they can go vote. We help get them to the polls if they need to. And we also educate on the different ballot initiatives and people that are running for office so that not only are people registered, but they're able to make an informed choice about who and what they're voting for. And can you just talk about, you know, the overall campaign to improve voter participation? Because I know uh, that there are a lot of people that are passionate, um, but I, I, I believe that when it comes to younger voters, sometimes there, there's a challenge with getting people more involved. So how did you improve voter participation? Um, so we, like I said, we organized Get Out the Vote drives. Um, you know, we got students to basically say like, yes, I'm going to go vote with a group of nine perk students. And then we actually physically took them to the polls um, so that, you know, a lot of people have issues with transportation and like kind of that accountability almost um, really helped, I think, get a lot more young people out to vote than have in the past. Now, given the increasing severity of weather conditions, how is NYPIRG working to educate students about recycling and local environmental solutions? Um, so our environmental protection campaign is actually how I got my start at NYPIRG. Oh. Um, 2023 has been the hottest year on record, um, which is really scary. And New York State, because we have such a huge um, economy, we actually set the tone for the rest of the country. Um, and because air quality is such a huge issue here in the Bronx, I really like to educate my students about environmental stuff. Um, you know, during the wildfires, the air quality index was off the charts and the students were so stunned. They were like, how is this happening? Um, and we know that more severe weather is coming and it's going to get worse. So we're working to engage students on ways to get involved from supporting bills to going to Albany to educating their peers about recycling and other local environmental solutions. And our students have really taken to it and like it a lot. Now, I love that there's something you know, regardless of what your interest is, there's something for everyone to join. Yes. And you talked a little bit about what made you join. Can you expand a little bit about, you know, what sparked that interest for you to actually join this organization? Um, so, like I said, I started with our environmental protection work and I have always really cared about the environment. Um, and like I saw this job, like jobs for the environment. And I was like, oh my God, that sounds so cool. And uh, I actually worked on our door to door fundraising campaign um, in the summer of 2022. It was very hot, um, but we were out there knocking on doors, educating people about the environment here in New York City and in Westchester. And then I was given the opportunity to come to Bronx Community College and work with college students. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. So thank you so much for sharing. I thought that was very cool that, you know, like you saw something that stood out to you and it was like something that kind of led you to being part of this amazing yeah. organization. So thank you for sharing that. Now, in terms of education, how does NYPIRG work to engage New Yorkers in public education campaigns? Um, like I said, a big part of what we do is we go out there and we knock on doors and we talk to people about the different projects and um, policy stuff that we're working on. We also, you know, host rallies. We're on college campuses talking to college students about all these areas that we work on, um, you know, so that they can spread the word. You know, I go to just this year alone, I've gone to 70 something classrooms and talked about NYPIRG and the work that we do. We're also on social media, anything that we can do to kind of educate and activate the public. Now, can you talk about the new deal for CUNY um, and just talk about the bill and share a little bit more of the importance on the CUNY community? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the new deal for CUNY does a couple things. It provides funding um, for free tuition and increased mental health counselors and provides consistent money for infrastructure projects. And this is vitally important to our college campuses all over New York City, but especially at BCC, where we have a lot of crumbling infrastructure, heat that often doesn't work. Like last fall, they had to cancel classes for like two weeks because there was no heat. Um, and some of our facilities aren't accessible to students with disabilities, like at all. Um, and most of our students at BCC rely on financial aid to even be able to go to school. So we wanna make sure that every person has access to a college education. Now, given that your organization is made up of students, you know, how did they react to the New Deal for CUNY? Um, and then, you know, what was some of the feedback that you heard in regards to some of the things like, you know, not having heat in classrooms? Um, so our students are really excited about the New Deal for CUNY because they also see it as a way where, um, like, they can have better professors, better classes. So they're super excited about it. Last year, we did the March for 
the March in March for the New Deal for CUNY, and we had you know hundreds of college students show up and speak and you know participate. One of my students spoke at that rally, um, so they're really excited about it. They think that it's so sad that like because in their view colleges have so much money that our facilities are falling apart and they you know it really fires them up. So. Now, how can the community support NYPIRG's efforts to address many of the various issues that we talked about today? Um, so the best way to support NYPIRG is to become a member, because our members are what give us that political clout in Albany to say, like, this is what the people want. Um, and the best way to do that would be to go on NYPIRG.org slash donate and become a member today. Now, with the year coming to an end, you know, what are some goals that you have for next year? Um, so we're really, really focused on the New Deal for CUNY uh, coming up, you know, because the state budget process starts soon and we're hoping to get it in the state budget. Also, we are really working on the Make Polluters Pay and the Climate Change Superfund Act, hoping we can get that in the budget this year, um, you know, and we're just going to keep fighting the good fight and making sure our projects continue. Now, I know that when people think of, you know, like activism and organizations like this, that they have to be loud or, you know, they have to be a certain way. You know, what advice would you give to somebody who wants to make a difference? Um, and maybe they're a little bit nervous about joining an organization um, that they have to kind of be at the forefront. Well, you don't have to be loud to be an activist. You know, if you want to be kind of quiet and behind the scenes, like there's ways to do that, too, even just you know, helping come help with a food drive or talk to your friends about registering to vote. You know, you don't have to be the person out there with the sign yelling, so, okay, thank but you. that is fun too. <laughs> right. I really wanted to touch on that because I think there are so many ways to help. And I think that people often have like this idea of what it means to be an activist. Um, and there's so many ways to like get involved. So I definitely wanted to kind of highlight that. Yeah, um, even sign a petition, like that's activism, so. Right. testify at your local board hearing. There's so many things in New York City. Right. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us and having this conversation. Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> if you would like more information about this organization, please go to their website at www.nyperg.org. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be back with more open after this.